Daryl and I met um, at a party in 2009. I was 21. I think Daryl was 22 already. We were together, you know, by the end of that summer and have been together ever since. We got married in 2005 and shortly thereafter, like most young couples, you know, we jumped right into to trying. Well, I would say a year. It wasn't solid trying, but we kind of knew something wasn't working or, or going our way. As a child, Daryl uh, had cancer, and so we believe that some of the chemo and radiation is what caused you know, us to find ourselves in a male fertility um, world. He had a doctor that had suggested RMA. We had met with our doctor, Dr. Hong. Um, great conversation, great meeting. October of 2018, Daryl had a procedure done. They removed his sperm. We did an egg retrieval from me in that December, and then January of 2019, a couple of weeks later, we, we found out that you know, he had implanted and God is so good. And now here we are over, you know, over a year later. I love RMA and I love Dr. Hong with every being of my, I mean, she gave me my son, she gave me life. And that is something that I can never repay her for. She is so compassionate and genuine. I remember Daryl and I, like, we wanted to celebrate. Like, this was, it was over. You know, that part of our journey was over. So we wanted to do something fun that night. So I remember telling Dr. Hong the day of, you know, the embryo transfer, can I go bowling tonight? I was like, I'm hearing all these girls say, like, they can't do this, they can't do that. I was like, can I go bowling? Like, I love to bowl and we want to go bowling tonight. Dr. Hong looked at me and she like almost had like this laugh that like I can't even believe like that's what you want to do. But she looked at me and she was like, yes, yes you can go bowling and you have fun. My nurse, Mary Ellen, to this day, I send her emails, uh, pictures of Vax, updates, um, and she writes back. These people are strangers that give you the gift of life and that is, that is irreplaceable. There's just been a lot of misconceptions that, you know, IVF doesn't work for African-American women. Something that I want to bring light to is there's different reasons that people are being brought to infertility. You know, I obviously explained that ours, you know, was, was a male factor. But I just want all communities, but especially in the African-American community, not to lump us all together. If there is an infertility issue, it's our um, duty as, as women, as individuals, to, to fight to understand what our issue is. You know, Dr. Hong not only being a woman, but you know, a woman of, of color was just something, um, it just holds such a special place in my heart and I can't wait to you know, share that story with, with Max and maybe my other children one day. <laughs>